Hello everybody, Comte here with another video. How to add images to a rotating 3D cube in DaVinci Resolve 17.2.2. Inside your edits window, go to your effects library, underneath toolbox, select effects, and go to find fusion composition. Click and drag one of these filters to your edits timeline. To insert image files into your project's media pool, Hold in Ctrl and press I. Use Command instead of Ctrl if you are a Mac user. In this particular project, I have chosen six individual image files. Each image will cover one particular side of the 3D cube that I will create. Right click on the Fusion Composition Edit on your timeline and go to Open in Fusion page. Inside your Nodes panel, hold in Shift and press Space to open up the Select Tool window. Use the search box at the bottom to find the Cube 3D tool. Select this and go to click on Add. With the Cube 3D 1 tool selected, hold in Shift and press Space again. And go to add the Renderer 3D tool, which will enable your rotating cube to be processed by DaVinci Resolve. The Renderer node should be automatically connected to the Cube 3D 1 node by the yellow arrow linked to the box to the right of Cube 3D 1. Select the small grey box to the right of Renderer 3D and drag your mouse cursor to the yellow arrow to the side of Media Out 1 to make a connection and enabling your cube to be visible on screen. With the left or right view options selected underneath Media Out 1, you should be able to see a preview of your cube above your Fusion timeline. Go to select one of the image files in your media pool and drag this to your nodes panel so that this becomes Media In 1. In order to apply some modifications to the image file, we need to add a transformation node. Ensure that Media In 1 is selected, hold in Shift and press Space, and go to add a normal transform tool. Using the mouse cursor, you can identify the six individual sides of your 3D cube by hovering your mouse cursor over these arrows around Cube 3D 1. As we can see here, the green arrow represents the front of the cube which is currently visible on the preview screen above the Fusion timeline. Connect the Transform 1 node to this green arrow to have the image appear. An orange shade has been applied to our image. In order to restore the default colours to your original image, select Cube 3D1, go to Inspector, click on Material, select the relevant cube side from the Face options. By default, the Front option should already be selected. Double click on the colour box underneath Diffuse and select White, which should restore the original colours of your chosen image. Repeat this process until you have all six sides of your cube covered by images, connected to Transform nodes also. If we select the first Transform node, which is connected to Media In 1 representing the image on our front side, going to Inspector, underneath Controls, we can find some variables that we can use to manipulate the image. If, for example, you wish to focus on a particular part of your image, you could increase the zoom value and alter the X and Y coordinates to focus on particular content in your image. Increasing Y will shift the focus downwards on your image and increasing the value for position X will shift the focus on the image to the left. Bear in mind that any rotations applied may leave some images distorted and may leave some transparency around the sides of the image on the side of the cube that you are currently working on. The width and height variables may be altered in order to avoid this problem. In order to apply a rotation animation effect, select Cube 3D1, return to Inspector, select Transform, ensure that your Fusion Frame Pointer is referring to the first frame in your animation sequence, in this case here frame 0, Select the keyframe diamond icons for rotation X and Y. Now point to the final frame in your Fusion Composition clip. As we can see from the bottom left corner, underneath our Fusion timeline, the final frame number in this sequence is 119. To apply a rotation sequence so that you will see all six sides and will return the cube to its original state at the beginning with the front side, change rotation X to 720 and change rotation Y to 1080. If you wish to change the size of your cube, use the scale variable below. And to change the location of the cube on the screen, 
alter the horizontal location using translation X and the vertical location of translation Y. Translation Z can move the cube closer to or further away from the viewer. If you feel that the cube rotates too quickly, we can alter the speed of your clip by first returning to the edits timeline. Right click on your fusion composition clip and go to new compound clip. Click create. Right click on your compound clip and go to select change clip speed. I will reduce the speed of the clip by half from 100 to 50%. And in order to ensure that the whole rotation appears on my final video, using the selection mode tool which I can also do by pressing A, I will click on the end of my compound clip and drag this to the end of the white frame which appears, which will double the duration of the clip of the 3D rotating cube. If you need to re-edit your 3D cube, first reset the speed of your compound clip by right clicking on this once again, going to change clip speed and setting the speed to 100%. Select your compound clip, go to clip and go to decompose in place. If this option is not available first of all, try deselecting your compound clip and reselecting. Your edit should then become a fusion composition clip once again, which you can now edit in fusion. What if you wanted to reduce the length of the sides to create a rotating card effect with one image on the front and another one on the back? In my modified nodes panel, I have left one image for the front of my cube and a second one for the back. If I select cube 3D1, go to transform, Reset the animation effects that I applied to my rotating cube and change rotation Y to minus 45. I can see a preview of the side of my cube. What I wish to do is reduce this. In order to have variable options available under Inspector to make this modification possible, first untick lock X, Y and Z underneath scale to create three more dimensional variables. To reduce the length of the left and right sides, decrease the value for Z. In this particular example, I'm going to decrease this value from 1.0 to 0 0.1. Click on Material, and like what we did with the 3D cube shape, under Defuse, I will apply a white color to each of the sides using the face options. In order to create a full 360 rotation, return to Transform, reset the value for rotation Y, Return to the first frame in your animation sequence. In this case here, it is frame zero. Select the keyframe diamond icon for rotation Y. Now go to the final frame in your animation sequence. In this particular example here, it will be frame 119 again. To have the 3D shape rotate to the right, type 360 into rotation Y. To rotate left, type in minus 360 instead. The surroundings of your 3D shape will also be transparent, enabling you to place this animation sequence on top of other video content on video tracks below on your edits timeline, such as the four color gradient filter from the generators inside the effects library. Thank you very much for watching. I hope that video was useful to you. If you enjoyed the content and wish to be notified about future uploads on this channel, please like, share and subscribe. Join me soon for another video. Take care.